Glory to the Most High Yah, Shabbat Shalom. Man, today's teaching is gonna set off some humbling truth. Today's teaching is a truth that you're not gonna commonly hear. You're gonna hear some truth about the Most High Yah, and I truly want you to be buckled up. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Closer to God Ministries, where we push forward in the kingdom of the Most High Yah. Closer to God Ministries is for those who really want to learn true submission, true obedience, reverence, and a fear of the Most High Yah. One thing about Closer to God Ministries is I'm not afraid to push the envelope. There's a lot of things that go on in the world that need to be addressed, but religious leaders won't talk about it. Closer to God Ministries, I'm pushing forward. Each man must be convinced in his own mind. I'm going to give you the disclaimer. This is not for everybody. If you're somebody that has a soft spirit, a sensitive spirit, you don't like that hard truth that can set you free, this is not for you. But if you choose to stay tuned, don't just run off on the plug with my content. Hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, turn your notifications on so you can see when I'm posting new content. And then if you really want to support the channel, check out the doggone link in the description for some exclusive discount codes. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Man, I want to tell you that when it comes to keeping the Sabbath, you know, I tried for a long time to defend what was not the truth instead of living the truth. And today you might be watching this as a seed gets planted and you might be saying, man, I'm not ready to give up my Saturday because my Saturday is the time where I do the stuff that I want. But I want to remind you that your life is not your own, especially if you want to get into the kingdom. And I did a live teaching yesterday about guarding the Sabbath. And I used to be one of those people that would defend Sunday worship, but do what you do, do your thing. And the Most High Yah at the end is going to judge us according to his word, not what man says, not what these theologians says, not what these pastors say, not what these men that claim to have the spirit of the Most High Yah say. He's going to judge us according to his word, not our feelings and emotions. Man, today, I also want to remind you before I get into the teaching, you saw the description. This one is going to be off the chain. You know, when you start out in life, when you get out into the world, you know, you're an adult, you're 18, you're chasing success. Everything is about chasing success. But I want to ask you, what kind of success are you chasing? And is the Most High Yah at the forefront of it? If you're chasing worldly success, I can guarantee you that the Most High Yah is not at the forefront of that. You might be trying to put him in at the back end once you go out and do the work and then give him glory for it instead of him letting you, letting him bless you with righteousness. See, I really don't care about worldly success because that won't get you in the kingdom. But having faith and fulfilling righteousness will. So today, you know, I hope to plant that seed where you hear me when I say, do not let chasing your per personal goals, ambitions, worldly success, you know, status and all of that cause you to disobey the Most High Yah. And that's what causes most people to disobey the, you know, the commandment of keeping the Sabbath. You know, well, I go out and work all week and Saturday is my day. And you will realize you will run yourself ragged when the Most High Yah has given you a day to fully rest from Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown. He wants you to take that time and rest. Study that word. Focus on him. Keep that day holy. Don't cause nobody else to work. And, you know, we're all born with a problem. And that problem is sin, is rebellion, is disobedience. So I'm going to ask you again, how are you chasing success? Does chasing that kind of success cause you to disobey Yah? Success is fulfilling righteousness and solving the problem of what is wrong with you. And when you solve that problem, you will be able to receive truth. 
you will be able to receive deliverance. You will be able to receive healing and receive spiritual gifts that only the Ruach can give. The biggest problem you face is not how to make more money, not how to live a better lifestyle. The biggest problem is, you know, figuring out what wickedness is in your heart and how to get it up out of there. And the Most High Yah tells us how to do it. So you saw the doggone description for today's Sabbath teaching. And we're talking about this topic of cheating that has caused many families to be broken apart. Okay, so do you really love Yah or just his blessings? And we're going to, by the end of this, I'm going to reveal to you whether you got some contempt in your heart, whether you got some of that selfishness, that pridefulness in your heart. Okay, in today's Sabbath day teaching, we're talking about a topic that you're not going to hear on Sunday because it does not draw out the big bucks and people will not show up with big eyes of hope like in prosperity gospel. Today, we're talking about adultery, which is the biblical term hardly no one uses today because theologians have been teeter tottering around teaching what sin is in order not to offend people. That's why. You don't hear about this stuff. That's why today might be the first time that you've heard uh, a, a teaching on this topic. Because on Sunday, it, 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 this is a business. And I gave you the scriptures talking about the, the scriptures talking about these people will judge, you know, unrighteously for money. They teach for hire. Let's keep going. Today's Sabbath message is hard hitting. It might offend you. But if. The truth of the Most High Yah offends you. Your problem is not with me, but with the Creator. I often say in my testimony, I had to get offended to get delivered. Okay. When we think about cheating versus adultery, you need to know the difference. You need to know where this word cheating and infidelity comes from. You know, what culture does that come from? Many families have been torn apart because no one wants to teach the truth as it is written because they rather leave a lie. You don't know how many men and women have been beaten up behind what is called cheating. And it seems like everybody got a definition for it. One person says cheating is this. The next person says cheating is that. While another person completely disagrees with both that and refines their own logical fallacy of what cheating is. But today, I'm not here to defend logical fallacies. I'm here to defend the truth of the Most High Yah. And that truth will humble you. I just want to tell you to buckle up. Okay? John chapter 4, verse 24. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He didn't say worship him with your feelings and emotions, but in truth. Today, I will show you how living a lie and not knowing truth will cause you to deem people as horrible people and say that they have sinned when they might have not. Would you still love the Most High Yah the way you claim to if you found out he was a cheater in your own understanding and beliefs? Would you still love him? Would you still worship him the way that you think that you're worshiping him if you found out that he possibly was a cheater in your eyes? Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 6 through 10. Stay with me. Buckle up. Write these scriptures down. The Lord said to me in the days of King Josiah, Have you seen what she did, that faithless one, Israel? How she went up on every hill and under every green tree, and there played the whore. And I thought, after she had done all this, she would return to me. But she did not return, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. She saw that for all the adulteries of the faithless one Israel, I sent her away with the decree of divorce. Yet treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but she too went and played the whore. Because she took her whoredom lightly, she polluted the land, committing adultery with stone and tree, Yet for all this treacherous sister Judah did not return to me with her whole heart, but in pretense, declares the Lord. So this scripture right here has some heavy, 
heavy verbiage in it. And you're going to see that the Most High Yah refers to a lot of things as his wife, as his bride. So this is an indication that theologians don't want to address because they want to keep promoting Roman Greco culture. And this is this passage or the scripture right here that shows that the Most High Yah had two wives. The first wife was Israel, and then he was also married to Judah. And because Israel played the harlot or played the whore, he gave her a doggone bill of divorce. This is why it says, O faithless Israel. And then when you think about when the apostles, you know, baptized and said, every one of you in the name of the Messiah, you know, repent for your sins and all of that, you will receive the gift. They were faithless. And Israel was going out doing every abomination known to man. And the Most High Yah divorced her. You see what I'm saying? So Israel and Judah, two wives of the Most High Yah. Think about that. And I want you to, and I'm going I'm to I'm lay into you a little bit later as to why he had two wives. This wasn't about just getting freaky, just getting a nut off, just getting your rocks off. No, it wasn't about that. Because you will read in scripture that Israel was the chosen nation. And here's the thing. If the Most High Yah did not take another wife, which was Judah, all of the other nations that are Gentiles, heathens, they wouldn't have had salvation. They couldn't have taken advantage of salvation. But it was because the Most High Yah took two wives that he was able to open up salvation to Israel and Judah, okay? So the Most High Yah had two wives at the same time. Israel is his first wife, who he was in a covenant with and also in a covenant with Judah. I've told you guys before, when you start saying the words marriage, you're getting into Roman Greco language. You're getting into legal jargon. But the word covenant is you know, what was used prior to us using the English word or the Latin word that, you know, stems from marriage, okay? This is why there is spiritual covenants and physical covenants. And that past the Most High Yah gave Israel a bill of divorce and in order for her to be in right standing, she had to return and take accountability for her playing the harlot activities, which is repent, Oh, faithless Israel, he was saying, she did not return to me. This is like a man who, you know, finds out his wife committed adultery. You hope and desire that she will return to you. But when she returns, you're looking for that accountability. And he divorced Israel because Israel didn't do that. And then as we keep going through the scriptures, you see where people from Yashriel that had faith were getting baptized, were repenting and getting filled with the Ruach, as well as the people from the other nations. But it's for that reason of the Most High Yah having two wives that salvation was opened up to the rest of the nations. A lot of you been sitting back thinking, man, sounds like cheating to me. But no, he did it for your benefit. Wasn't to get a nut off, wasn't to get his rocks off, Okay. If you have ever chastised a man or a woman for what you call cheating, today I'm going to give you the truth about what adultery is, why it is a sin, and what is the punishment for it. See, here's the thing. People will defend cheating all day long, but they can't, they can't give you the judgment for it. What is the judgment? What is the punishment? I'm going to tell you where that word cheating and infidelity comes from. Adultery is a sin as outlined in the Torah, which is the first five of the books, which a lot of these pastors tell you not to look at. And it's the reason why they don't understand this. Also determined by the marital status of the woman and is punishable by death. I'm going to break this thing down to you. OK, a lot of people, you know, especially I'm going to say women will say, man, that ain't fair if it's determined by the marital status of a woman and. I know you're going to sit back and say, well, if a man can have multiple wives, can a woman have multiple husbands? And the answer is no. Uh, the, the Most High Yah was marrying nations that he wanted to save. That's Israel and Judah. But he did it for salvation because he is the creator. So I told you this thing is not about 
you know, just the lust of your heart and thinking you just going to have some orgy and being able to do all this freakiness. No, it serves a greater purpose. Okay. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, see that the status of the neighbor of his wife. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. You think all these people would, you think Jada Pinkett would be sitting up, running around talking about an entanglement if she was going to get stoned in the street and, and, and let alone sitting up interviewing her husband on how she did it. You think, you think people would be sitting up promoting all this sneaker leaks and side pieces if the punishment was still being carried to date. Think about that. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, that means she's married. She's in a covenant. And in order for the man to commit adultery with her, a woman in covenant has to break that covenant with her husband. That's the status of a woman. Both the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. There's the punishment right there. Leviticus. For everything that there's a sin, everything that's a sin, there is a judgment for. Okay. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Let marriage be held in honor among all high regard. This is not you sitting up wanting marriage because you think you're supposed to be business moguls. Y'all supposed to be a power couple. All wickedness, all wickedness. You don't even need to entertain marriage if you're not fulfilling righteousness. And I'm going to explain to you some jokers that entertain marriage that thought they was doing it, thought they was moguls, thought they was bad, B-I-T-C. You know what I'm talking about? And they was wicked. They was unrighteous. Okay. Let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous, sexually immoral and adulterous. So just to be clear, the Most High Yah is going to judge you based upon his terms of adultery and not what you call cheating due to cultural norms of Western Roman Greco culture. So the reason I say that is because you will have people swearing up and down you did something to them when they don't even know what the heck they're talking about. Oh, you hurt me so bad. How? If what I'm about to tell you today is not a sin, it's not a sin. And the most high Yah himself had two, not one, two wives in order to save people that have faith from all these other nations and his chosen nation, Israel. The next scripture is an example of spiritual adultery. I told you there's two kinds of adultery. There's spiritual adultery and there's doggone, you know, physical adultery. See, the physical adultery is what you're going to get punished for. That what the judgment was for. It was punishable by death. But the spiritual adultery, if you do not repent for it, guess what you ain't going to guess what you ain't going to get. You ain't going to make it in the kingdom. You ain't going to make it in the kingdom. So let's keep going. Matthew chapter five, verse twenty eight, five. Verse 28, but I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So just for the thought running in your mind and you looking with lustful intent, that's adultery. Spiritual, you didn't touch nobody. You got a spiritual adultery and a physical adultery. The scripture of physical adultery this, the scripture of physical adultery is Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10 that we went over when it talks about a man laying with his neighbor's wife. You don't lay with nobody spiritually. You lay with them physically in the bed and you'd be looking at, looking out, talking about is your husband here. Is your husband? That's adultery defined by the status of the woman. The scripture of physical adultery in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10, which is outlined the punishment for physical act of sin of adultery punishable by death. The main problem with how we have been taught to believe is that cheating is a sin when we should be talking about scriptural adultery, being what the Most High Yah will judge us upon. So according to our culture, believers would call Abraham the father of the faith, Isaac, Jacob, David, and the list goes on. You know, they would call them cheaters. Because these men had multiple wives, but were in right standing with the Most High Yah. How come they weren't put to death? If the Most High Yah says, you know, I'm not the author of confusion. I'm not going to take the Old Testament and put it against the New Testament and vice versa like these wicked boogers do out here. 
It's because they don't understand it. They don't have the Ruach upon them. They have religious spirits. Let's keep going. The only men that got rebuked by the Most High Yah was Ahab and Solomon, but not for having multiple wives. Listen, buckle up. But not for having multiple wives. They got rebuked for the selection of women they chose. Ahab chose to wife Jezebel, who manipulated him. And Solomon chose women that led his heart away from the Most High Yah. That's why they got rebuked. Not because they had multiple wives. And I'm going to give you book, chapter, and verse to show you. I'm not giving you logical fallacies, opinions. You got these people that will defend everything that's not the truth when they don't even know the truth themselves. The truth ain't in them. They want to worship in spirit, but not in truth. And that's why it takes somebody filled with his Ruach to give this to you. So just to put this in context, the Most High Yah gives us examples of what not to go after as men. Don't go after Jezebel. You know, don't go after the Proverbs 5. Don't go after the Delilah. Why? Because these women have ulterior motives and it ain't serving the Most High Yah. And they will manipulate you to think that they are God-fearing. So let's read 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1 through 13. And before I get into that, I want to remind you that you had men that had multiple wives that were in right standing with the Most High Yah. And then you had kings who had everything that you could imagine that weren't in, the, weren't in right standing with the Most High Yah. And they struggled with women. They struggled in the leadership of trying to do the same thing that the righteous were doing. First Kings chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. But King Solomon loved many foreign women, as well as the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Sidonians, and the Hittites, from the nations who the Lord had said to the children of Israel, you shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. So it, it, the Most High Yah said, leave them doggone strippers alone. Leave these Jezebels alone. Leave these wicked women from other nations alone because they serve other gods. And guess what Solomon did? He clung to them. Cuffing season. You can't, you can't serve the Most High Yah like that. And the Most High Yah rebuked him for it. Rebuked him and Ahab for it. Okay, verse three. And he had 700 wives, 700 princesses and 300 concubines and his wives turned away his heart. These women led him away from the Most High Yah. That means these women was like, you going to serve me or you going to serve the Most High Yah? What's it going to be? That's why these men got rebuked and weren't in right standing. Because they chose women over the Most High Yah. And the Most High Yah himself had two. Abraham had multiple. David, Isaac. You know that song, Father Abraham had many sons. He also had many wives, but he didn't choose them over the Most High Yah. Let's keep going. Verse 3, verse 4. For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after their gods. I told you guys, you know, there are other gods out there. And the reason when you say God, you're being very vague in who you're talking about because your lifestyle and in your actions and your belief, you could be serving one of these other gods who we have been commanded not to doggone follow. Okay. For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not loyal to the Lord, his God, as his heart of his father, David. His father was in right standing. Father had multiple wives, but the son couldn't get it right. He was attracted to the foreign women, the exotic women, the same women that was trying to deceive and manipulate him, turn his heart. Well, you're going to have to choose whether you want a diva, whether you want a boss chick. Or you want to serve the most high, y'all. And guess what he did? Oh, weak and effeminate self. Chose these doggone women. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. 
Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and he did not fully follow the Lord as his as did his father David. Verse 7, then Solomon built a high place for Shemos, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. Verse 8, and he did likewise for all his foreign wives who burn incense and sacrifice to their gods. So instead of being a sacrifice for the most how to use, he just turned around and started serving his women and all these other gods. And that's not the scriptural order. That's why the Most High Yah rebuked him. Verse 9, so the Lord became angry with Solomon. Hmm. That takes away this fairy tale God and this fairy tale Jesus that they try to teach you on Sunday in order to draw out all this money from your pockets. Let's keep going. So the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel who had appeared to him twice, not once, but twice. You need to correct yourself. These women is leading you astray. You are slipping. Verse 10, and he had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he did not keep what the Lord had commanded, breaking the commandment of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord said to Solomon, because you have done this and you have not kept my covenant, mm, you broke the covenant. And my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. Pretty much telling them like they might call you a king, but you ain't no king to me. Verse 12. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days for the sake of your father, David. I will tear it out of your hand of the son. However, I will not tear away the whole kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant, David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. There is Solomon getting rebuked. Wasn't because he had multiple wives, because there was other pillars of the faith that had multiple wives. It was the selection. You claim to be a man of God, and yet you're going to go out and pick Jezebel? No, sir. Truth ain't in you. You claim to be a man of the most high God, you're going to go out and pick a stripper? No, sir. No, sir. You're going to go out and as a man and pick all these women that play in witchcraft, casting spells and believing in astrology and all of that. You gonna go out and pick them? No, sir. And he told them, I'm gonna strip away what was gonna be yours if you wouldn't fulfill righteousness. Okay. The truth of Yah is simple and plain. If you have the Ruach and he has given you the wisdom, the Most High Yah does not, does not have problems with a man marrying multiple wives and it is not adultery. He does not want you to marry women that serve other gods that were in other nations. He was addressing and settling statues for the problems that come from a non-believer of Yah and that serves other gods. His problem is that he don't he didn't want you uh you know not to marry multiple wives, but he wanted you to do it in the Messiah. He wanted you to do it in the Most High Yah. If they're not in that body, if they're not in that covenant, don't do it because chances are they're going to end up causing you to break covenant, okay? And, and the fact the Most High Yah, you know, he gives instructions for righteousness if a man desires to take another wife, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you feelings and opinions over here. I'm going to give you that book, chapter, and verse. So Exodus chapter 21, verse 10. If he takes, listen to this, if he takes another wife to himself, another, listen to that verbiage, another, that means you already had to have one. And he's saying, if you desire to have another one, and, and the Most High Yah in scripture, you know, you can read about the Most High Yah giving men another wife as a gift, as a reward. Mm, truth will humble you. If he takes another wife to himself, he shall not diminish her food, her clothing, or her marital rights. So you can't sit up and take on another wife and then get mad because you got to provide. Get mad because you got to protect all of them. Get mad because you got to be the, be the balance in the household and establish order. No, you're supposed to give her food, doggone clothing. You're supposed to protect her. And he's saying you can't diminish her, her rights. And it talks about if you diminish her rights, what, you know, what has to happen because of that. So this is not a man 
snooping around, just playing in the cookie jar. But in righteousness, a man saying, I'm taking another wife and the Most High Yah saying, this is how you treat her and this is how you provide for her. You've probably been thinking that these people that have multiple wives are cult leaders, but you don't even understand it because you yourself might not be in righteousness. Each wife is in her own covenant with her own husband. That's why I told you it ain't no doggone, no orgy. It ain't no doggone orgy or none of that. Just you wanting to get your nut off because you got lust and wickedness in your heart. No, it ain't about that. Each wife is in her own covenant with her husband. For all the Most High Yah was married to Israel first. And in order for the Gentiles to have salvation, he had to enter into a covenant, a marriage with Judah. Let's keep going. Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. So that means if you are in a covenant with the Most High Yah and you divorce your wife for any other thing than sexual immorality and or adultery, you yourself have committed adultery. So you can come up with any kind of reason you want. She don't do what I say. She don't do this. She don't do that. I'm divorcing her. Did she commit sexual immorality or adultery? Because if you divorce her because of that, that means you have committed adultery. So the Most High Yah himself divorces Israel because she committed adultery. So people will say all the time, the Most High, they'll, they'll, they'll teach a, a soft and effeminate message that ain't the truth. God hates divorce. That ain't the case because he sure enough divorced Israel, as we read about in Jeremiah chapter three. You play the harlot, get your butt divorced. Go out here and be a thought, a hoe, uh, an entanglement if you want. And you marry, get your butt divorced. Bottom line, that's the truth of the most high, y'all. OK, why is this truth so important? Because we live in a westernized Roman Greco culture that has values that the most high Yah doesn't care about. What he does care about is his law, statutes, and commandments and precepts that he commands Israel, Judah, the sojourners or strangers from people or strangers from other nations to keep in faith if they want to inherit the kingdom of heaven. We live in a wicked culture where families are being torn apart for non-sinful things due to pride and selfishness. I'm here today to tell you, like, if you are a woman and you think you want a good man, Prove to me a better man than a righteous man, one that can get into the kingdom, one that can go amongst the elders and they'd be like, yeah, that's a good man right there because he fulfills righteousness. Show me a good man. Show me one. But you can't because there ain't one that's better than a man fulfilling righteousness, willing to lay down his life for the most high Yah. But what does that mean? You might have some selfishness in your heart and say, that ain't going to work for me. That ain't going to work for me. My man can't have no dog on another wife. I'm here to tell you that it ain't up to you. If a man is doing it righteously because it is permitted in scriptures, it ain't up to you. But because of this Roman Greco culture we live in where, you know, it don't line up with the order of the most high. Yah, Christ is the head of man. That means man has to be submitted to Christ. Man is the head of woman. That means the woman has to be submitted to man. There's an order to things. All of this doggone, this this wicked antichrist equality where you got people pushing that men can have babies in nonsense. Where you think that come from? Don't come from the most high Yah. The same way this terminology of families being broken up behind cheating don't come from the most high Yah. He gave you adultery. He gave you adultery. We live in a wicked culture, wicked culture where families are being torn apart for non-sinful things due to pride and selfishness. According to the scripture, if a woman was pissed off at her husband and went before the elders to plead her case of what we call cheating, it would have went a lot different than what happens in family court today. You can, I'm, a, I'm about to read to you some of the nonsense that people have broken up their families for for the sole fact of their feelings and emotions and think they got the truth. But a lot of these people that do this, a lot of these women that do this, find out the grass ain't greener on the other side and they never get another shot, no matter what they think they can manifest in their mind because they're not living in the truth. So back in the day, biblical days, it wasn't no doggone wicked family court system that, that just says in God we trust and then don't execute no righteousness like today. No, you went before the elders. 
Imagine, you know, a woman coming to the elder saying, you know, my husband cheated. What is this cheating you talking about? Explain it to me. Well, you know, he got a whole nother woman, you know, laid up in the bed and I walked in. That's cheating to you? Well, let's look in the book. Let's look in the book of the Most High, Yah. And they were judging righteously back in the day. And they're going to ask the man, did you take this woman as your wife? Can you prove that her father gave her away to you? Man says, yes. Woman's pissed off. That's an example of a man taking two wives. He had to go to the father, ask for her hand in marriage. And if the father said yes, he paid a virgin's price for her, took another wife. But how many sisters out here today don't want to hear that truth of the Most High Yah? You'd rather keep on living that lie, talking about cheating. Men out here living the same thing. She cheated. She did this. No, you had another man just came along and wiped her up where you never intended to. Bars. Bars. Mm. These are the statistics of the nonsense. The Most High Yah will judge according to his word and not our culture, feelings and emotions. See, Roman Greco culture has a lot to do with why a weak, soft, and effeminate message is getting taught on Sunday. A lot to do with it. There's a reason why you ain't going to hear this. And for that same reason, let's go over some of this. Lack of commitment. That's fixable in righteousness. Lack of commitment, 73%. Let me give you some statistics. 70 to 80% of the divorces in this country are filed by women. That number goes up to 90% when they're college educated. So we got a problem. And I told you, families are being broken apart. And when we start looking at these statistics, you can't run from it. You can't call yourself God-fearing as a man or a woman, and you didn't partake in foolishness, and you still got time on the clock to get your butt right. Lack of commitment. Don't sound like adultery to me. Sounds like somebody got in their feelings and emotions because, you know, possibly the man or woman wasn't doing what they wanted them to do, but that ain't justification biblically for divorce. That's 73%. Argue too much. 56%. Let me give you some facts. This is what I know. And this is what I know according to righteousness. If you get, if you are a man of the most high Yah, and you do what Ahab and Solomon did, which is go out and marry a Jezebel, a Delilah, a Proverbs 5, guess what you're going to do? Argue all the freaking time. Guess what? If you are a God-fearing woman, a righteous woman, and you choose an Ahab, because he's a king and got some money, guess what y'all gonna do all the time? Argue all the time. But it ain't a doggone, it's not a justification for divorce biblically. You better get your butt back to your husband. You better get your butt back and treat your right wife the right way. That's what the elders would have said, okay? Argue too much, 56%. Infidelity, 55%. Let's talk about the origins, the etymology of these words, because... You know, in scriptural days, in biblical days, these people didn't speak Greek and doggone uh, Greek and Roman. No, these were a Semitic people, a people of Hebrew descent. The Messiah himself spoke a dialect of Aramaic, which is in the family of Hebrew, and it ain't in Greek. That's why people that love the Greek will try to put the New Testament against the Old Testament. Ruach ain't on them. Infidelity, 55%, which is a 15th century word that stems from the Latin word infidelitium, which has completely different meaning than adultery. This word also stems from paganism, meaning false belief or not believing in religion. Okay, married too young, 46%. All these excuses, and ain't none of them adultery. Married too young, 46%. Man, marry young and, and, and fulfill righteousness longer. But nowadays you got everybody. Here's the thing. Scripture says, you know, a man will leave his father and mother and cling to his wife. But what happens with these brothers out here? They just want to play in the cookie jar. Let me take all the virtue away from these women. Let me take all the virtue away. I, don't, I ain't going to wipe none of them up yet. 
My money ain't right. Well, why you got your hand in the cookie jar? Just getting your rocks off because that qualifies as sexual immorality. No, get, get you one woman. Start off with one. Watch her with the word. Maybe she gonna end up doggone sanctifying you like scripture says. Unre and, and let, me, let me peel back. Nowadays, you have a, a, a large majority of women that believe in what's called a hoe phase. Because the, the, the men sit out here and have their hoe phase. But I told you, there ain't no equality in righteousness. Be a man and sit up and tell yourself that you're going to fulfill everything that a woman was supposed to do. See if your butt going to get in the kingdom. Be a woman and think that you can do everything a man is supposed to do. And the most high God is going to believe that and let you in the kingdom. You are, you are fooled and ignorant. That's why I got to give you this truth. And that's why I said you might want to buckle your seatbelt. Okay. Unrealistic expectations. 45%. 45% still ain't adultery. This is all the stuff people get divorced for. Break up their family, let alone this cheating. Lack of equality. Mm. Who you think pushing that freaking argument? Who you think pushing that argument? I tell you, a righteous man has no business marrying a feminist. You marry a feminist, you make that bed, you lay in it. Wash her with the word, as scripture says. But chances are, you don't have that level of patience. You don't have that level of anointing. That's why the Most High Yah was telling Solomon and doggone Ahab, leave these wicked women alone. They push in other agendas. They don't serve me. They serve these other gods. You gotta pay attention. Lack of equality, 44%. 44%. Men, I'm here today to tell you that there ain't no there ain't no doggone you reading scriptures and saying, well, I want to just do what the woman does. That ain't going to work to the most high Yah. He made you the leader. That's the biblical order of things. If your butt don't know how to lead, hey, you better doggone just take some leadership classes. Read your scripture. Pray to the most high Yah for revelation so he can show you how to do it righteously so you don't end up like Ahab and Solomon. Because here's the thing. As men, you might be able to lead in the workplace, but that ain't got nothing when it comes to leading righteously in the home. Nothing. King Ahab had a dog on army and could lead the men, but guess who he couldn't lead? One woman, Jezebel. She's manipulating his weak, soft, and effeminate butt up and all around the dog on kingdom. Lack of preparation. Hmm. People say, man, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for marriage. I got it. I hear you. But that really means you didn't want to fulfill righteousness. You rather kept on, you know, living a lie, living in wickedness, living in abominations. That's all the justification people give for breaking up their family. Lack of preparation. I told you marriage is to be held, you know, amongst all. Let that bed be undefiled. But don't nobody hold marriage in high regard now that everybody ain't going to get married. I'm here to tell you that if you are Ahab, if you are Solomon, chances are you're not going to be worth a dang to a woman. And you better hope you get with a righteous woman so she can sanctify you through her conduct. I'm here to tell you that if you are doggone, you know, a feminist and you pushing this gynocratic agenda, all this liberated stuff. Hey, chances are these jokers ain't buying what you selling. Bottom line. And you better hope that you can get delivered out of that stuff because you may only get one chance while you chasing for what you think is you supposed to have or you can manifest in your mind. That's why I told you, you don't get this truth of the word. You don't get this level of truth on Sunday because this don't draw out the big bucks. This brings conviction. This points out selfishness and prideness in your heart. Okay, domestic violence, 25%. Well, what about what about all of the women or the men? Because men getting beat too, men getting beat too. It's just that pride in a man won't raise, won't make him raise his hand and say, "Man, that little woman that's small put them hands all upside my head." So domestic violence. Just because you're going through some domestic violence, are you just trying to end it? Because if you're just trying to end your doggone your marriage or break up your family, you didn't even give. 
the most high got time to doggone fix these people. And chances are you rather weaponize unforgiveness rather than believing that the most high Yah can deliver them out of that. Mm. Mm. I told you the truth will humble you. Some people don't even want to see you change for the better. And then when you do change, you can live that way for 30 years. They still don't believe it because they still want to pin you as the person you wore. Not the person walking in the newness of life. Man, that woman can never be good. She cheated. You didn't even give the most high y'all an opportunity to fix these people. That man is a dog. This, this man cheated on you 30 years, 30 years ago in your accusations. This man then got his life together, then got delivered. Your life still is in shambles and you can't find another husband because don't none of them want to select you. Some of these people weaponize unforgiveness to hold it over your head. But all you got to do is keep walking in righteousness. So there I just gave you some of the statistics, the nonsense that the Most High Yah will judge according to his word. You can run to the courthouse and file that paperwork if you want. But if you ain't got justification for it, guess what you guess when you going to hear about it? When you have to take an account for everything that you did. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine through ten. Know ye that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Sitting up committing all this adultery. That's why I gave you this week the word of the week. It wasn't a scripture. It was repentance. It was repent. And that's how the most high Yah knows that you ain't treating him like no sugar daddy where you got faith without no works. He tells you to repent and be baptized. Every one of you. That means you're going to have to give an admission of what you didn't did wrong. You just ain't going to come to him. Oh, I want to worship you. No, tell me what you did wrong. I told you the hardest problem in life is figuring out what problems you got in that deceitful heart. The scripture says the heart is deceitful among all things. Who can understand it? You got to fit. That's that's how you live righteousness by figuring out what's wicked in your heart and what the most high Yah says, how to doggone get delivered up out of it and how to walk in the newness of life. That's the journey of being a safe sinner, being born again, continuing to figure out, man, why did that thought enter my mind? It must be something in my heart. Mark chapter 10, verse 11 through 12. And he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. So if you divorce your wife, you know, without no justification, biblically sexual immorality or adultery, just so you can get out here and be single and run the streets again, hit a whole phase. And then doggone marry another woman, you committed adultery. That's the scriptures. This is why people don't want to talk about it because serial, you know, polygamy is so prevalent. See, you will have these, these theologians who have had many wives and they will doggone look at the man who is able to manage multiple wives like the Most High Yah himself having to, like Father Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, that can do it at one time and say, oh man, he must be some kind of cult leader. No, he's just fulfilling righteousness. So if a man divorces his wife for any other reason than sexual immorality or adultery in order to later on marry another woman, he commits adultery against her. If a woman divorces her, her husband to later, marry, to later marry another man for any other reason than sexual immorality or adultery, she has committed adultery against her husband. So why is it defined by the marital status of a woman? Because just like men of the faith, the Most High Yah, if a woman is single and you pay a virgin's price for her and her father gives her unto you, you have now entered into a covenant with that woman. It is a different covenant than with your other wife. She had to be single. Her father had to give her unto you. But if you just go out here and try to uh, talking about you fulfilling righteousness and you laying down with a woman who's married, that's adultery. A married woman can't break covenant with 
you know, a man that's not her husband. If she does, that's dog on adultery. If she divorces her husband for anything other than sexual immorality or adultery, that's adultery. But you have people, they'll repent for all this, but they ain't, they, they don't get this truth. And the, and, and the unrepented sin that is in your heart that you think in, you have fulfilled 100% righteousness. That's what's going to keep you out of the kingdom. Keep getting your ears tickled if you want. Keep getting your ears tickled. Okay? Well, that nips a lot of all those excuses and justification to be rebellious and prideful and selfish in the bud. Okay? Now think that in culture, now think in this culture we live in, every man should not have multiple wives due to the fact that they might lack truth, understanding, ruach of Yah, wisdom, leadership, faithfulness to Yah, and not man. Ahab, Solomon, lacked doggone righteous leadership, tried to do what the righteous men did, couldn't do it. So I'm not telling you that every man needs to say, yep, 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 hooray, I'm going to go get me another wife. No, 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 you need to get right with the most high Yah, because you're going to end up being an Ahab. You're going to end up serving all these other guys. And these women going to gang up on you like they did doggone Ahab and Solomon. Solomon was a sucker. Righteously, I'm saying that. He was a sucker. Then women ganged up on him and turned his heart away from the Most High Yah, as we read about. So I'm not telling you, brothers out here, run and try to go get your wife. I'm giving you the truth. I'm giving you the truth. Chances are you lack righteous leadership. Chances are you might be successful in the world, but at home you don't know how to get your house in order. Most high y'all tells you how to do it. Most high y'all tells you how to do it. Sisters out here. I'm here to tell you that the most high y'all didn't ask Judah, you know, or, or ask Israel, could he take another wife? He just did it. Why? Because he is the creator. Abraham wasn't going around asking all his wives, could he take another wife? No, he did it in righteousness. That's what I'm telling you. You have to be 10 toes down in righteousness. Not in replacement theology, because the Most High Yah is going to judge you according to this very word and all of the word, Old Testament, New Testament, 66 books, 80 books. He's going to judge you according to all of it. To all of it. If you have faith. The word of the Sabbath day is repentance. When you encounter material, marital problems that rub your feelings and emotions the wrong way, if you claim to love him, you must allow the Most High Yah to fix your heart and your spouses. Men out here, I challenge you to do what the scripture says in righteousness. You marry a wicked woman that got some demons in her. I challenge you to do what the word says. Wash her with the word. That means you need to be setting an example righteously instead of running off, trying to doggone divorce her and committing adultery, making her commit adultery. Because you don't know, you don't want to learn no righteous leadership, but you yourself signed up for this. This stuff goes deeper than by the powers vested in whatever state married you. Ain't no power in that if it ain't the power of the Ruach Hashadesh. Man, you have to stay in this word have to stay in this word or your family will get shattered. You're opening up doors for demons and all of this other stuff to come in and you don't even know it because you're allowing all this stuff in your life. You're entertaining all this stuff as a man and you ain't, you sitting by not saying anything, being like Ahab, I ain't gonna say nothing, man. That's gonna start an argument. Start that argument if it's in truth, if it's in righteousness. Wash her with the word so she can be made clean. You chose her. Cuff that. Cuff that. Same thing. Same thing out here, sisters. You can't sit up and run to the courthouse like them statistics that I gave you. 70% of, you know, 70 to 80% of divorces are filed by women. 90% when they're college educated. That's pride. No truth. All them justifications that I just gave you. Them is 2023 20, statistics. But will you do, I challenge you to do what the scripture said. The sanctified wife sanctifies the husband. Are you that God-fearing? Or are you just out here play pimping? Playing like you love the Most High Yah. Sanctify that man that you said yes to. You knew he wasn't right with the Most High Yah. But just because 
He's driving your blood pressure up. All of a sudden, you feel justification to just leave him. Split the family up. Steal the kids. That's not even your kids because they carry his last name. He gave the seed to you to carry for nine months in order to bring life into this world. Hmm. This is all the stuff people don't repent for. This is all the stuff. That's why I said you ain't going to hear this on Sunday because it's convicting. It's convicting. It makes you think I'm giving you that flat out truth of the most high y'all that people don't want to hear. They rather hear about sowing a seed to get a house, to get a mansion, to get a car, to get a husband. When you doggone are prideful and selfish in your heart and really don't want to really don't want to serve the most high y'all, anybody can prophesy to you and it don't even have to be in truth. And your ears will be getting tickled. Why you doggone getting led into sun worship and not worshiping the most high Yah? Do what that word says if you claim to love the most high Yah. Be that man righteously to lead your family. Be an example. You can't hold a gun to nobody's head and make them fulfill righteousness. But what you can do is stop doing talking and live it. Live it. Figure out that problem in, 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 as a man, what's wrong in your heart and repent for it and ask the most high yacht to deliver you out of it. You know, you know, repent for leading your doggone wife the wrong way, showing her everything that the most high yacht ain't. You doggone dressing her up and, and co-signing on her going out here dressing like a harlot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This this all the stuff. This all the good stuff. I told you this going this going to be this going to be better than power better than any top 10 on Netflix. Why? Because it all is pertaining to helping you get into the kingdom. As I told you the Sabbath is is is, is far different and commanded where Sunday ain't. You get a different truth. I I'm, I'm telling you when you go back and check this out. Take my word for it. When you I want you to I want you to Google or YouTube Sabbath day teaching, Sabbath day sermons, and see the level of truth that you're getting, whereas you're going to realize on Sunday you ain't been getting it. You ain't been getting it. And let those seeds get planted in you. The truth of the Most High Yah will humble you beyond what you feel you know and what is actually truth in order to reveal rebellion, selfishness, wickedness, and pridefulness in your heart so that you are led to repentance. It's meant to humble you, meant to humble you. Sisters out here, how many of you would tear your family apart and say, I'm taking the kids because this man want another wife because you spiritually can't handle the truth and righteousness? How many? Because many have already done it. If you are a God-fearing man or woman, I give you his word every Sabbath via scripture and not replacement theology. I'm not sitting up here trying to sell you on Valentine's Day, on Christmas, and all of that wickedness that comes from Roman Greco culture and not the Most High Yah. We live in a day and age where people believe in, in a fairy tale God that is defined by their false truth and don't none of that line up with the truth of the one who really is described in scripture. So why do they believe this way? One reason is because men have relied upon Bible colleges and replacement theology instead of the Ruach of the Most High Yah and to give them the gifts of the spirit to wisen them up and to justify the deceitful issues of the heart they don't want to deal with because deep down they enjoy sin. Deep down they enjoy sin. It's a lot of stuff being pushed in the world, a lot of agendas being pushed, a lot of narratives. And guess where they don't stem from? They don't stem from the truth of the Most High Yah. You know, earlier on this week, I did a teaching on, you know, most people know, they know about how sin entered this world through a monogamous relationship, meaning one man, one woman. It wasn't through a, uh, uh, a marriage of a man having multiple wives that sin entered this world. It entered in through Adam and Eve. But most people don't know, you know, how did we learn how to do this sin? And you only going to read about that in Enoch. And I gave you that earlier this week. And you can you can go back on my live in my feed and check that out. But that's the same reason that a lot of some of these same agendas are being pushed where people are promushing and marching for abominations. Who taught us that stuff? It was the fallen angels you can read about in Enoch chapter seven. 
Shabbat Shalom. The day of judgment is near. Repent for your sins. The king is coming. Shabbat Shalom. Go in peace. Go in love. Closer to God Ministries kicking it gun barrel straight. Have a blessed day. Bow.